Well, there's a shot of Lawrence Cannon. You saw him just a minute ago. He's Minister of Transportation. And you know, speaking of transportation, there is something that is eating into the lifestyle and the household budgets of Canadians from coast to coast right now. And that, of course, is the price of energy, and specifically gasoline. Man, it is unbelievable. Uh, for those of you who haven't tanked up lately, uh, you're in for a rude surprise. But I know most of you are well aware of going what's going on, as is my colleague, Ken Boschkoff from Rainy River, Thunder Bay. No, Thunder Bay, Rainy River. You got it. Thunder Bay, Rainy so River. Good, All good. right. Now, Ken, Ken is very concerned that the oil and gas industry is not treating consumers in a fair and equitable manner. And so I've asked him to be on the show because I want him to, under, to explain to us what his feeling is. And Ken, you're backing up your opinions with some legislation as well. So tell us first, what's your view of what's going on? What should consumers know? Well, the private member's bill is essentially to ensure fair competition and give the Competition Bureau some teeth to enforce this and make it easier for people to come into the market. Right now, there's only six or seven companies that control the whole thing. They get the oil, they distribute it, they refine it, and thus they also retail it. To a large extent, they're all owned by someone else. And so uh, we want, and we've seen very recently in the GTA, an oil shortage. And, yet, and the prices still go up. And then we find the oil companies making massive profits. So this is where we're going. Canadian people are finally realizing that no one has any problem with a fair profit. But at this level, are we being gouged? I think we are. Now, Ken, the, um, the Competition Bureau a couple of times has gone into a fairly lengthy investigation, and they haven't been able to prove there's been collusion between the oil companies. Are you telling us something different? No, I'm not. There's, there is a difference between collusion and gouging, and we will have a very difficult time proving collusion that one company tells the other one that it's going to be a dollar six point five today okay nudge nudge wink wink what we can prove is that the gap uh, between the cost of the price of oil its refinery and its transportation and distribution has fixed limits even with the, the tra uh, taxes added on so we know that what they decide to charge is what the public will pay so when I see these websites saying consumers rise up, let's boycott mm, this station yeah. today. We can discuss that a little bit more, but basically you can see that there's a huge increase in public awareness about the fact that we are getting gouged. Okay, so what would your bill do? What, what hope would it give consumers that we care, we'll do something about it? It would in, allow the expansion of new players into the market, which will hopefully allow for more, for more competition. At this stage, in almost any neighborhood, in any city, in any municipality throughout Canada, you see less opportunities to buy gas. So it means that the control has also shifted from those who might have been a franchisee or an independent owner. There are fewer and fewer of those and they're almost all corporate stores now. So when people want to protest by saying let's not uh, buy gas from this company, they may actually be hurting an independent operator who's trying to make uh, a, a decent living. Now, finally, the um, the Conservatives, I used to be one of those, you know, I admit it. Didn't we all? I'm a recovering Conservative. As I was, too. No, oh, well, good. Anyway, back in an election or two ago, the Conservatives said, you know what, if gasoline goes above 85 cents a litre, we're going to eliminate part of the gasoline tax. Well, now we're like a buck ten a litre, and we haven't heard a peep out of the government do you feel, do you hear from your constituents, people saying, hey, we thought there was some plan here? That is only half of it. So very clearly in back, black and white and many times over the campaign circuit, and certainly the people who ran against me campaigned on the 85 cent limit, and they also campaigned on eliminating the three cent excise tax. Oh, yeah. And uh, very early, uh, the Prime Minister stated that during the campaign that that would be gone in the first few days. Obviously it is not, it is still here. So those are two very much broken promises, very deceptive, and a total, there's a, just a totally vacating of that whole thing. They, they, they threw it in my face many times uh, that this was going to happen, and uh, to, to a large extent, hey, I agree with that. Those would have been good things to do. 
Lastly, if I run a gas station or a gas company, should I be afraid if the Liberals come to power? Are they going to get in there and mess around with the free market economy? Well, we're not going to mess around with the free market economy, but I believe that the oil companies really have not only a moral obligation, but a corporate obligation. Uh, no one objects to anybody making money or paying a return on investment, and there is capital investment and capital risk. But when you see the billions being made every quarter, and people who need vehicles to get to work, especially in rural Canada, remember, right. we are really subjected to, to the problems of distance and less service stations. So when the price goes up, it may be a dollar six in Toronto, but it could be a dollar fifteen in other parts of the country, and even a dollar twenty-five in Vancouver, or a dollar fifteen in Thunder Bay. So uh, these are big issues for rural Canada, but they end up affecting urban Canada because the infrastructure disappears. It makes people want to travel less, do those kinds of things. All right. Thank you, Ken Boschkoff, MP for Thunder Bay, Rainy River. Thank, Thank you. you, Garth, and thanks for watching MPTV.